Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Jesus reminds us to watch for the signs of his return. Today, we will explore further what we are seeing in our times that line up with what signs he said would indicate the potential of the end and his return. We will also discuss the practical meaning of this as we watch and as a remnant, prepare as he so leads. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, Kathy. Uh, here we are, uh, End Times Friday. Um, good lots morning. Of, Happy lots Friday. Lots of stuff. Happy Friday in the uh, summer. Uh, interesting stuff going on. We had a uh, here in Colorado, which is uh, normally, by the way, we you know, as the end of July, August, we have used to have all the time afternoon thunderstorms. Right. Uh, and rain, you know, which was actually good, but it's you guys are super dry uh, right now. Though, a little bit. Right? We had it. We had, uh, but last night, uh, probably at, I think it was like one in the morning, a massive uh, lightning and thunderstorm, and it was it was big time. So it woke everybody up, you know. So it was. Oh wow! It was that loud, and um, it was beating. the The rain was beating against the windows, and um, it was big time. Which actually was. Like with hey hallelujah we need we need rain so, right right uh, and personally I always like I, I I've always loved thunderstorms and uh, I love uh, a good thunderstorm when I am inside uh, yeah like if I if it's a great excuse to like just spend a day and relax inside and not have to go out I love it yeah but uh, yeah yeah it's one of the uh, it reminds me all the time particularly like when I saw last night because um, the lightning. It isn't just flashes. It's these line, these massive mm-hmm. lines of, of lightning. Um, I keep re- being reminded um, whenever I see that of uh, God and Job, mm. uh, where you know, and the, the, you know, someday maybe we'll do a study of Job a little bit about. Uh, you know, we've talked about adversity, but uh, and a lot of people point to that of, well, yeah, but look at Job, you know, and uh, well, it's it's quite a bit different, interesting enough, as you go through the scriptures different than people think because all they all they 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 take one verse right you know and satan asks permission and and so they say well god obviously all these bad things that happen have to be under god's permission Mm. and it's like "Eh, you don't quite have that right um uh and and because they say well it's his permissible this is interesting his his permissible will Mm -hmm. (laughs) mm-hmm Say well, if it's God's permissible will, it's His will. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, don't look at them separately. And and, right. if, and if God says, "Yeah, sure, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd love for you to whack my uh, children," and and um, I'm up there, and so everything that happens to you, see, that's when they equate it. Well, then everything bad that happens to me is because God permitted Satan to give it, and he had to get permission for it. You know, and it's like, right? Yeah, you've missed a few and things. And that kind of negates the us stepping out of the kingdom and out of His will and instruction, too, right? Yeah, and free like and free will, free will, yeah. and the world that we're in, and the control of Satan, mm-hmm. and you know, so they take they take a statement in Job and apply that to you know everything, mm-hmm. but it's not not true. But the one thing that I'm reminded of, uh, particularly with the story of Job, is that part of it you know what why you know when you look at okay what happened there ultimately uh job says you know if i was god i'd be doing this a lot differently mm-hmm. and, god, and god says to him go ahead okay i'll let you be go ahead you make lightning you you take care of all the uh, animals in the ocean you know uh-huh. and, yeah go ahead Go ahead. I, let's I, see how this I'm goes. Gonna, I'm going to back <laughs> off here. You you take over. Go ahead. Let's see what you can do. Because um, he makes specifically about make lightning, and that that's the thing that always strikes me. And uh, and Job's uh, the interesting response on Job was silence. Mm. It's like, uh, hmm, I think I just asked the wrong question or made the wrong <laughs> statement. Uh, sorry, I get uh. it now. I get right. it. I get it now. Right. I'm trying to be God and not you. I think I'll just mm-hmm. re- I'll just let you be. I'll truly surrender all my life now to you. What do you have to say about it? Without condition, I need, I need, I need. It's just nope. Right. I, I surrender. Said so God. Said so now that you surrendered, I'll give it all back to you. Right. Uh, and that was the whole point of the whole story. So it was really, really interesting. But 
uh, when you see this magnificent lightning mm-hmm. um, and you realize how fantastic it is, you know, it's, it's just, God says, you know, I, I can handle this. So, <laughs> um, That's awesome. As we're talking about the end, a um, couple of interesting things have been going on. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, one is that, um, uh, I think we talked a little bit about this, but uh, it was predicted that Russia was going to shut off the pipeline into Europe. Right. Um, and they did. Right. Uh, and they is called it. it is they it call- completely? It's, it's shut to like 20 Well, what they did is they, first of all, they, they shut it. Something? They shut it completely off. Okay. Uh, and said it was maintenance. Right. Um, okay, Which maintenance. no one seems to believe. No. And then maintenance <laughs> supposedly was finished, and so they turned it back on. Right. But they only turned it on. They started at 40%. Mm-hmm. And they decided, well, we have mechanical problems. And we're going to go down to twenty percent. So okay, Europe, twenty yeah, percent was the number. I particularly had heard, Germany, yeah. et cetera, is only getting twenty percent of their fuel mm-hmm. that they need, and they don't have right. stock stockpiles of it. So, so and there's real concern for the winter. Big coming time, up, big time. Like yeah. literally, you know, people could freeze and, and, and right. you know just not be able to function, and what's going to do to their economy? So, Russia's playing that card. Um, remember that um, Russia supplanted Saudi Arabia as the primary gas and oil supplier to China. Mm-hmm. And now it's Russia. Um, right. And they, they, uh, what they did is they you know, set up a system. So Russia now is supplying to China, which obviously they have plenty of demand. Uh, and um, uh, they've skipped paying in dollars, what they call petrodollars. Right. And they're paying directly. And they're paying in the ruble, in ruble right. uh, et cetera. So they've changed the economics of that. Um, Along with that, and this has just just happened a week or so ago, is that uh, Turkey uh, and Iran and Russia and and Putin, you know, he's in the middle of this war. war. He he goes to uh, Turkey and Iran and the three of them meet uh, Mm -hmm. and they set up a new alliance uh, is, you know, we are going to we are going to have Russia supply us with stuff and then we'll supply them, you know, with with the certain things. Um, and uh, Persia or Syria uh, has joined that. Um, so wow. uh, as you look at uh, the potential of the uh, impact on the end is that Gog and Magog, uh, you know, China, Russia, uh, and, the, and the elements of the Middle East start to form together. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, remember, that what do they do? They come against Israel. Right. Uh, and so it uh, looks like uh, Russia, China... Uh, Iran, Turkey, and then Syria are lining up, and these people, uh, you know, and then Iraq is is part of the, will be part of it. Uh, and uh, one thing to understand is that um, Turkey, Iran, Syria, uh, those are called Shiite Muslim nations. Mm-hmm. Um, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Jordan. Those are Sunni. Right. And which one? I, I know you've said it before. One of those is more tolerable than the other. Yeah. Is the best way to put it, I guess. <laughs> well, the, the Sunnis um, um, mm-hmm. are more westernized and okay. really are, yes, we're Muslim, but, but we, we are basically uh, willing to be part of the world system, particularly the, what okay. we call the Western world system, and cooperate with Israel because the pure, the pure Muslim um, mm-hmm. at the at the basis, basically, and basically, it would be based on Christians. You know, would look at well, we operate by the Bible, right? Well, the Muslims operating by the Quran, by the Quran, and right. the Quran at the base of it, at the purest level of it, is mm-hmm. everybody that isn't a full believer in our system mm-hmm. is an infidel, right? And then everybody that's an infidel, we need to kill them. Right, and you get and the re- Shiite take that very the literally. The Shiites and the take, Sunni it, take do it, not. And the, well, correct? the Sunnis, if you talk to them, it's like, well, yeah, uh, we know you're infidels, but uh, we're not going to take it to that extreme right. of coming against you. Matter of fact, it'd be better for us to cooperate with you. Um, so okay. that's why in Israel, uh, they literally have treaties now mm-hmm. with with Sunni Arab nations. Right. Uh, and they've established uh, a system. And the one advantage of it is because, and this is this is really because uh, of the nature of, actually we were just talking about the nature of Satan, is that um, 
Satan is kill, steal, and destroy. Mm-hmm. Well, the Muslim sext, sext, S-E-C-T-S, mm-hmm. uh, fight each other. Uh, and that if you don't believe the way I believe, I actually consider <laughs> you an infidel. Right. Even though you're Muslim, I still consider you an infidel because you don't believe the purest level of it. And so uh, the Shiites come against the Sunnis mm-hmm. and against the uh, uh, Kurds, etc. And so um, they are purposely uh, doing that. Well, Israel be, and, and Israel just comes against anybody that is opposing them. Mm-hmm. And particularly anybody that can develop a nuclear weapon or missiles right. that are going to come against them. And so Israel, they've done two things, you know, and again, this is the favor of God, really. Uh, first of all, they've, they've had uh, what's developed is called the protective dome. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's just a ability that um, if short-term missiles, and usually like, for example, the Hezbollah and, and Hamas, uh, they're in southern, uh, you know, n- northern Egypt, uh, southern mm-hmm. Israel, uh, Lebanon, uh, northern Israel. Um, they fire missiles right. into the into the into the country, um, and they do it a lot. Uh, they do it quite often. And Israel developed this iron, what's called an iron dome, where and it's literally because uh, I got to actually see a little bit of it is. Um, I know you've, you've seen it with your children is, you know, they play video games right, right. and they can shoot stuff down, you know, on the video game. Mm-hmm. Well, that's really <laughs> how they developed it is uh, they have a system that, that knows that it's in the air. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, they do a trajectory. Right. Is it going to hit a population? Because it, they only bother to take down the ones that actually would would yeah. cause damage. So the right? ones that wind yeah. up in the desert or something, they just let them hit. Uh, yeah. Fine, no problem. If they're going to hit hit a population, it'll say, okay, this one. Mm-hmm. And literally, they have these <laughs> these uh, in Israel. When you're 18, you got to you got to go into the military. You you're not. It's not an option. Every one, one, right. woman and man has to go in the military. So they have these 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds sitting man they're good at video games now. and they're good at video <laughs> games and they're and they're man and manning these in a sense joystick right, stuff right and they see it and they <laughs> they shoot it and they're 99 percent accurate mm-hmm. uh to you know so it's an iron dome so it doesn't really get it well that works for um short-term missiles but not long-term missiles mm-hmm. uh so the big deal is you know uh nuclear weapons long-term missiles. Well, Israel, because of their uh, intelligence system and their military, they attack supply depots Mm -hmm. and try to take out things that that prevent them from being able to have these missiles uh, and arms and then uh, nuclear stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, And they're they're always evaluating everything all, all the time with Iran, Turkey, Syria, anything that's Shiite. That, right. they, that they know are coming against them because they want to kill them. Uh, so the Sunnis, they don't want to be the ones attacking the Shiites. Mm-hmm. But they do like Israel attacking the Shiites because it, pre- it, it prevents it prevents the uh, ability for them to wind up with nuclear mm-hmm. weapons, which remember the Shiites and the Sunnis are against each other too. Right, right. Uh, so they're afraid of it, a little bit afraid of it. Mm. But okay, so that's why they developed these treaties with that's Israel. That's interesting, right? Yeah. yeah. Is uh, well, you go ahead and do it. We'll support you. Saudi Arabia does is the only country of the of the Sunnis that doesn't have an official treaty with Israel, but an informal treaty with Israel. Mm-hmm. It's like we'll support you. Yeah, go ahead and do and it. And now, what did you say? You said Saudi Arabia, though. Are they doing anything with Russia and China right now, or are they still no. staying? Because typically, they have been very friendly to us and to Israel. Yeah. They are, well, they just are and, it, and it was it was uh, exacerbated by the fact that uh, Russia. Remember, uh, think of Saudi Arabia is a supplier to China of right. oil and gas, and okay, Russia. So that's made Russia that even worse because made it Russia worse. They actually them. made it worse. 
is that well, we're going to we're going to yeah. uh, instead of you being the supplier, we're going to be a supplier. So they've lost a they've lost right. a big, big customer. Now are they able to pick up their production in a way to um, help make up the gaps for Europe, or is that is there not really a system in place for that yet? Well, um, yes and no. Um, think of Saudi Arabia and the Middle East, mm-hmm. um, and 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 we you know we kind of uh, understand this. They're primarily oil. Right. Uh, what Russia has done is develop the capability of natural gas. Right, which is what they need for the heat so, in, in Europe. Mostly, well, they, they developed, what they did is that they, you know, Europe developed the technology mm-hmm. to, you know, gas burners to right. be able to do furnaces with natural gas. And so, you know, could Saudi Arabia, you know, go through refining and all that yeah they could but they generally were just oil right so no mm. they can't easily just so say that's let's not get it. ready to, it's you not know. a ready resource interesting enough hmm. you know and and because of the current you know political environment guess who would be the best supplier for natural gas the united Who's states that? really we have it um hmm. and but because of the political mm-hmm. environment they have diminished the capacity to be able to create natural gas. Right. Uh, so we don't. Have, we even have a trouble with us using it, right. let alone being able to, to send it over. Because by the way, we don't have a pipeline to Europe, right. so it'd be very expensive to tank it over. Wow. Uh, so interesting. Uh, it's hmm. all. It's all. And that's why Russia, in a sense, was really clever. Is that they built dependence mm-hmm. on them. Hey, we'll, we'll build a pipe. They built a pipeline. And uh, yeah, sure, we'll just charge in. That was good pricing. Um, and now, if all of a sudden, oh, you know what? I'm not going to give you any more gas. Uh oh, because uh, they didn't develop backup. They didn't develop what do we do right. now? Or even realize when the whole issue of the Ukraine war com- comes around, they took a position as well. We're going to come mm-hmm. against you because the world says we should. Mm-hmm. And Ru- and Germany didn't say we should, but. Uh, we could be without gas. So maybe right. we should do something a little bit different. So this is the, and again, think of the, uh, a little bit as things line up, it's man's wisdom that mm-hmm. gets everybody in this pickle because nobody's seeking God in any of this. Right, uh, right. So I'm not seeking, okay, what do we do? It's I'll do, I'll do, I'll do, and political stuff. And uh, that's why things that don't make any sense, like for mm-hmm. example, in the United States, um, we developed with Canada. It's called the Keystone Pipeline. Right. Uh, uh, Canada has a massive ability of, of reserves, and they were going to pipe it to us at a f- super favorable rate. Right. And and we don't and we're not at war with Canada, <laughs> so uh, and they don't want to kill us, you know. So we're in good mm-hmm. shape there. Well, uh, the government, uh, it's there, and they will not turn it on. Even right. today, with all the prices of crazy gas, mm-hmm. literally, if they turned it on, it would drop it immediately. Right. Well, you would think, well, then. Now, is this partially because, or not even partially, primarily because that allows them to continue to push an environmental agenda that they're they're really wanting to um, switch our dependency and kind of the cut it off and then let's be yeah. forced to start developing this well that's what's thought um, that's what's thought because again it's it's dealing with um uh, inadequate information like for example mm-hmm. um and that you know again this is recent there's there's people that are pushing the government and they would actually like the president to do an executive order mm-hmm. <laughs> which which you know goes against everything that, that we stand for which is free market is um Make it so that gas can never go below five dollars a gallon, right? Um, and the reason is what you just said is well that'll push everybody to solar and right. to electric, um, and won't that be a good but idea? But we don't have infrastructure ready to support that. Yet. Well, it would interesting enough. It would crush us one, mm-hmm. and two, and two, and this is what is dumbfounding to me. People, you know, and they say I'm, I'm going to go to electricity. Mm-hmm. By the way, uh, people are starting to realize because of, of the electricity cost, uh, they're starting to say, wait a second, 
I thought it was going to be cheaper, but it's not. Right. And I said, okay, where, where, where does electricity come from? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, well, it's electricity. Okay, but what powers the electric? How do you get electricity? Right, right. Guess what? Coal. Uh, Which is not as clean as not what as clean we're hoping. And, 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 uh, uh, and gas. Now, solar is truly extremely clean, as is wind. But then I also saw, did you see that article that had a picture of like a dump with all these, you know, 20 plus year old solar panels now yeah. that have run their course and they're no longer efficient and then there's no way to dispose of them. So there's this whole other environmental impact even from having the solar energy. So it's, in, yeah, it's interesting to see the things, the problems we create. Yeah. Well, wind isn't even a, a factor because it's not, um, you can't, you can't, you can't literally, it, it what's called, enough, it doesn't right? pencil that, you know, with even massive, massive wind farms, the amount of electricity that's created is minimal. Right. Solar is really good. But it's solar actually, is solar's actually really, really good, good. But uh, now they're running into this new problem with yeah. that. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's just the ability to uh, install it, you know, and mm-hmm. they couldn't do it. If they accelerate the transition to electric, Mm-hmm. The ability of people to pay for and put install solar can't keep up with that. Um, right. So uh, that infrastructure isn't isn't available yet. So um, it's all in this interesting place. But yes, there's a philosophy is well. Let's actually we want prices of fuel mm-hmm. to be high um, because of the environment. Won't that be a right. good idea? Well, again, it's all about economics, so that. Um, you know, because of people's experience right now with the cost mm-hmm. of food and right. the cost of fuel, mm-hmm. that um, there's been, uh, for example, a big decrease in uh, uh, new orders of Netflix and tremendous uh, cancellations right. of Netflix because they don't have the money to pay for it. Uh, AT and T just came out and said. Uh, we have a gigantic reserve set up, and they had they actually missed their earnings mm-hmm. because of it, because people are not paying their cell phone bills. Right. Uh, well, and it's interesting. Even like you watch, I read an article just on Walmart and expecting Target to follow suit and whatnot. But the shifts they came out a report the shifts in um, patterns because inflation is so high, and people are having to spend such a significant amount of money on food and gas. Um, suddenly all these things that they stocked up on, there were so many, you know, quote unquote luxury items that were a lot of the spending for the last two years in COVID right. um, that these, especially the Walmarts and the Targets stocked up on as they could because of supply chain. And now they're going to be doing big markdown sales to get rid of them because people have shifted. They're still spending the same amount of money as what I read. The money is being spent, yet it's being shifted to food and gas and necessities and away from all the luxury items. So now there's this, you know, this lump of luxury items that have been stocked up that are going to have to be sold off at way low markdowns. And so it's just interesting to watch the economics of the whole thing. Yeah. And so as you look at it, again, from we're looking at it from a uh, uh, where's it all headed, Mm -hmm. is that um, think of all the things we've just described is um, it's building pressure right? Uh, that there's changes uh, happening because of the certain things that are happening in you know, Russia, uh, China, uh, the uh, Shiites in the Middle East, Turkey, mm-hmm. um, Iran, Iraq, uh, uh, Syria. Uh, they're lining up. Remember, it all lines up against Israel, mm-hmm. ultimately. Um, and the alliances are forming up, and the pressure, the economic pressure, is that it has to move toward a uh, a collapse. Because we're gonna we're gonna talk here um, and do just a, a little bit here before we end this session in about the beast. But the beast, remember, is the system mm-hmm. that is set up and is willingly embraced by the world. So that you know, when we when we think of the beast, particularly the way Daniel described it. All the other ones, the first three, you know, which were uh, going to be Persia, um, uh, Greece, and Rome, mm-hmm. they were all national uh, takeovers right. by force, by war, and, and threat of war. You know, we have the power, then, and you don't, and you'd be better to, to surrender, which most of them did. Uh, 
but it was by force. And so then mm-hmm. when he when he said the first three beasts, kind of a tribute to the the name beast. They were mm-hmm. they came after us and devoured, you know. And right. well, the fourth beast, he said, by the way, is different. We've talked about that. Um, mm-hmm. The fourth beast is the same underneath it all. It's the same thing. What domination mm-hmm. and one world government and trying to control everything. Uh, and manage everything. So he said it's a beast, mm-hmm. but people don't, in a sense, don't see it as a beast. They willingly accept it. Mm-hmm. Okay, now think about why would anybody willingly accept? And, and when you accept, you know, just think of the simplicity. Mm-hmm. Um, we're an American. Right. You know, what do we do every November? We vote. We vote, yeah. We go and vote. Every two years we vote. Um, and we, democracy, establishes a um, system of putting people in governmental positions, which mm-hmm. we vote, local, city, county, state, federal. Uh, we elect senators. We elect uh, congressmen. We elect presidents. Um, well, how do they function? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Theoretically, <laughs> they're, they're supposed to function by the Constitution. Right. Uh, but and we have a, a rule, an order of rule of how we function, versus you know what somebody else functions. You know, even Germany, mm-hmm. that's a democracy. Their constitution is different than ours, right? And uh, how we how we function. So that's how we're supposed to function. So when you think about what's going to happen, is that um, we literally we're Americans that go to that process of democracy. Mm-hmm. We Americans are going to willingly accept relinquishing all that and going mm-hmm. to one world government where now right. we're under a a in a sense a dictatorship right that which tell, means we will see a problem that that offers a solution to a yeah. perceived solution yeah to. so why would you think of anybody uh, and this is going to be worldwide why would mm-hmm. you willingly give up historically what you've always experienced Right. And say, I'm, I'm willing to do that. Well, mm-hmm. because then I'm because I'm suffering. Right. Um, and it's awful and it's terrible and we can't get out of this. And by the way, and this is part, of, I believe, part of what's going on now is a diminishing of the uh, belief and confidence in the ruling government that I that I'm part of mm-hmm. uh, is that, well, they can't get anything done. Right. And now it's really bad, and they're not, they can't get anything done. And, hey, right. this comes along and says, hey, you give up your sovereignty, and we'll give you these beautiful things, mm-hmm. and we can do it. Everybody says, sure. And it's kind of a, you know, hey, you got nothing to lose mentality at that yeah, point. Yeah, and by the way, there's a, there's a underneath it all is a, a thought of um, globalism. It's called globalism. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is being taught in universities. It's being taught, you know, throughout the world in terms of, of uh, speaking, speaking, that speaking. That is laying and, groundwork for yeah. this. So that if you if you if you yeah. talk to a uh, you know what they call millennial, uh, what do you think about globalism? Mm-hmm. They're coming. It's like sounds good to me. Um, right. It sounds better than what we have. Um, mm-hmm. And so they're already thinking maybe it's better. They don't, they're not ready right. to embrace it yet, but maybe it's better. Mm-hmm. But when something comes along, uh, you know, they, they uh, are going to embrace it willingly, which means that there's a collapse. Okay, the right. collapse, and this is what we're trying to get to here, uh, is coming from the pressure mm-hmm. of things not being able to function normally. Right. And it builds and builds and builds because ultimately it has to break. Mm-hmm. The system has to break. I mean, really break so that, yeah, okay, I choose today instead of buying those luxury goods at Walmart, well, mm-hmm. I'm going to buy food and gas, but I can still function. Right. There'll be a moment when you literally can't function. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's like, uh-oh, the system broke. It collapsed, yeah. what I call yeah. collapsed. Out of that comes the, the beast that we've read in Daniel mm-hmm. that is different, and it's ten heads and mm-hmm. uh, the horns, and then the, there's there's a horn that... Uh, is part of that group, but not any of the ten rises up, gets rid of three, sets himself up in that role, and then over the course of time, which we'll get into next time, uh, starts to take over 
mm-hmm. and, and he, be, he is the Antichrist, and then he's identified as the Antichrist, and he's working it, you know, until mm-hmm. he finally gets in, in place, and then ultimately he says, I'm God, um, and brings the wrath of God into the system. So uh, the question would be, um, and again, um, all we can say is that, I can say two things. You can't absolutely predict <laughs> that. Mm-hmm. Well, of course it's going to happen in the next two or three years. We don't, we don't know this. Um, God says, sorry, don't don't lay your own timeline on it. Um, right. And be careful. And Okay. At the same time, watch and mm-hmm. be prepared. And the second thing is, is that regardless of whether we're actually at that final period mm-hmm. of time, because of the pressure, and that's what we're trying to describe here, the pressure building is in fact going to cause big time disruption right and it's going to be economic disruption and therefore we're trying to urge everybody um, seek the lord Mm -hmm. he has wisdom so that even if it's not the end it's not like well i don't need wisdom because i'll just handle it no (laughs) he says you're going to need it now right uh, and start watching because it is possible because of all these factors, which is, uh, again, a strong possibility is that actually we are headed toward the end. And again, probably not within a year or two, but maybe in five years, 10 years, uh, things can happen where the tribulation could start and the beast is being set up. So right. we'll talk more about that uh, next time. So we kind of kind of set up the premise today a little mm-hmm. bit of just talking through the, uh, uh, the pressures that are building and the implication of all that. Uh, and, you know, in Daniel, it just says the fourth beast is different. Mm-hmm. And we got to understand what that means, and then what does that look like relative to how we approach it, and um, uh, what's our belief as a believer to get prepared for that. So we'll we'll talk right. about we'll and talk about that next while, time. All the while, you know, as you said, you know, all the while while we're watching and waiting in the midst of this and paying attention, um, the importance, as Rich and I always talk about here, of building that intimate relationship with yeah. the Father. Because he will speak to you, he will guide you, and not only for your own protection and your own provision, but because as he does, and you see it throughout the Bible, when his hand is on his people, they are set apart, and he has brought glory, and other people see him. Right. And so even, you know, there, there is a both and. There is us learning to listen and walk with him for our own, you know, for his own protection and love and provision over us, but it is also so the world sees Jesus. Amen. And that is ultimately his greatest act of compassion, yeah. is wanting to draw people in to his mercy, his forgiveness, his salvation. So it, yep. it matters so much. Amen. All right, well, we'll uh, pick it up again next week, and uh, we'll get back into the word of Daniel, Revelation of the beast, and get into the mark of the beast ultimately. And, you know, we got lots of things to talk about, but uh, we just had an enjoyable time just to kind of set, up the, set it up again today. So, Kathy, we'll see you uh, Monday. Sounds wonderful. Have a great weekend, everyone. As always, if this um, brought questions up for you, shoot them to us at questions at afjministry.com, and we will be happy to talk about them. Yep. Thanks so much, and have a great weekend. Okay. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.